Hello! This video is about an introduction to the raw processing tools in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw and their similarities. So currently we are in the library module in Lightroom. So there are four images at the base you can see in the strip view and one image is selected is the one image that we will be working with. So if I go into the develop module, the same image appears here. The develop module is divided into three columns, let's say. There is a column on the left which shows the navigator, the presets, the snapshot, the history and any collections you might have made. The behavior of the navigator is that if you just literally scroll over an image, it shows that particular image in the navigator as well. The next column is the central window which shows you the view, the large view and the before and after. And then finally on the right hand side is the panel with all the controls available. The very first one at the top is histogram. I've collapsed everything and I'll open one at a time just to minimize on the space usage so that you can see better. The very first one is the histogram. The histogram reflects the dynamic range of an image and the level of information available. In the histogram you have two little triangles pointing upwards. These are clipping warnings. So if you come and click on it, on the left one it is the shadow clipping, the right one is the highlight clipping. I recommend activating them in case something is clipped it will show over here on the image in blue or white or whatever color that may be. This also gives you the basic metadata as to the ISO, the focal length, the aperture and the shutter speed. Then underneath that you have the selective adjustment tools. The crop tool, the spot removal tool, the red eye correction tool, the graduated filter, this is a linear graduated filter, this is the radial graduated filter, and then you have the adjustment brush. Underneath you have the basic, if I expand it by clicking on the arrow, then you have all the controls for exposure, contrast, highlights, etc. And then you also have the treatment option of whether you wish to work within color or in black and white. So for example if you clicked on black and white the image by default is set to Adobe Monochrome. In color the default is Adobe Color. There are a bunch of presets available in terms of the profile so you can either click on the drop down here or you can click on this icon view and then it goes to show you all kinds of presets that may exist. So I have collapsed all of them. So there's X numbers with Adobe Raw, Adobe Color, Monochrome, Landscape and as you scroll through you can see the immediate effect on the image. So this is not a bad idea to start off to explore. Perhaps some preset may give you a better starting point. Once you have chosen it then you click on close and then you revert back to the basic settings. Next, the tone curve. This is available to you in two forms, either a linear curve or a point curve. So by clicking on this little icon over here at the bottom right, you can swap between that. And you can set a custom curve any which way that you want. And additionally, you have a interactive curve adjustment tool as well. So I'm going to collapse this for a little while. Then we have the hue, saturation and luminosity slash color. So here you will again have the interactive tool and you have the hue, saturation and luminance options available so you can click on any one and then continue working and modify the colors or whatever it is or you could click on all and then all three will appear simultaneously. Depends on how much desktop space you may have. Next is split toning. 
if you decide to do any split toning. The options are available to you here in terms of hue, saturation, balance, shadows, saturation. Then details. This reflects sharpening and noise reduction. And again, you have interactive tools and you have more details in how to play around with it, which we'll discuss. Lens correction. This is enabling the profile for a particular lens, brand, or whatever it may be, and also allows you to customize a profile for a particular lens to minimize or eliminate any distortions like edge fall off or any lens aberrations per se. Transform. If you wish to transform and modify, straighten some verticals, horizontals, or any of those things, then you can do them over here. Okay? And as you notice, as I go over each one of the sliders without clicking anywhere, it shows me a grid to allow me to see the perspectives. Any effects, which is post-process or while you are processing, whatever it may be. And finally, the calibration. Okay. So there would be different versions. So if you click on here, notice they start back and date back to 2003 version 1. So in case the relevance of this is in case you have processed an image with an older version and you wish to retain that and continue working on that for whatever reasons, then you can choose an older version as well. Generally, for a new image that you have just shot recently or just about to begin the processing, then the current version will allow you more variables. In the presets, you have a bunch of presets that Lightroom provides to you. So if I click on color, then there's natural, bright, high contrast. And notice as I scroll through, or as I move my cursor over each one, it shows me the behavior on that particular image. So these are presets which you can click and it will then impact the image with the preset. You can also create your own presets, which we'll explore shortly. Creative presets, again, different kinds of presets. Then you have black and white presets, and you can go through the preset if that gives you a better start, and then you can fine tune it. Then you have curve, grain, sharpening, and vignetting. These are all presets that will impact the image that you're working on. Snapshot. If, let's say, you were processing your image and you had done X number of things and you would like to make sure you don't lose anything, you could create a snapshot at that point, which can also be applied to other images. History, next up, is a great feature, which will basically record every step that you might have taken and then allows you that many undos if you simply go back to that uh, starting point or at whatever point that you may wish to. And finally, collections. This has to do with collections, which we haven't talked about. So this is basically a space which shows you if you have created any collections whatsoever. Hope this kind of introduces you to the basic tools of raw processing. Let us now take a good look at the raw processing available through Bridge, and uh, which is also an integral part of Photoshop, generally referred to as Adobe Camera Raw, or a short form, short acronym of ACR. So, just the way that I had the four images available, so just the way that I had four images available through Lightroom, I have the same four images available through Bridge, and what I intend to do is open them so that they're available to me through the raw processor. So I've selected all four of the images and there are options. You could right click and say open in camera raw. You could double click but by double clicking it that means that Photoshop will also first become active and drain the resources on your system. The most efficient way is if you were to go up here where it says open in camera raw simply click in here and there all four images then appear 
Fundamentally, the Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom's develop module are exactly the same. They perform everything in exactly the same way. The difference is in the user interface. So here, now I have the strip of images on the left column, and then the central image space in the middle, and then the adjustments on the right, and some of the custom corrections or some other adjustment tools are available at the top. The look may be different, but the functionality of the tools are exactly the same. So the left we have are the images in the left column. Then at the top we have tool sets. So there's the magnifier, the scroll tool, the hand tool. Now the color, the white balance tool, and then the color sampler tool. This tool does not exist in Lightroom. And when we get into processing, we'll discuss that. And then we have an interactive adjustment tool for the curve or the hue, saturation, and luminosity. Then we have the crop tool, the straighten tool, the perspective adjustment tool, the healing tool or the clone tool, the red eye correction tool, the adjustment brush, the graduated linear graduated filter, the radial graduated filter, and then we have here, which are preferences that you can modify, then rotate left, rotate right, and the trash bin. On the top right hand side, there's this little icon, which is a useful one. Personally, because when I do any raw processing or any processing, I try to eliminate any distractions and maximize the screen as much as I'm able to. So if you click on it, so I was already clicked. So normally, a lot of I've noticed in class, a lot of people work like this. Not a bright idea because there's too many distractions going on. So if you click on this, this is a full screen mode. Alternatively, you also have the option of using a keyboard shortcut, which is F. So if you hit F on the keyboard, it becomes a full screen. In the right column, you have the histogram, and again, you have the clipping warnings at the top, left, and top right. Top left being the shadows, top right being the highlights, and again, the basic metadata reflecting actual uh, settings on the camera. The other thing you have is RGB values here. Now in Lightroom the RGB values are reflected in percentage values. Here the RGB values will be reflected in 0 to 255. So depending on what your preference then you work accordingly. As opposed to Lightroom having the collapsing arrows on the right which is, uh, let me get to Lightroom very quickly so that we can look at it. So in Lightroom we had these collapsing arrows. So basic when I unfurl, clicked it, opened up all the settings. Similar to that with Adobe Camera Raw, you don't have that but you have tabs at the top. So the first tab is basic. Notice it says basic over here. The next tab is tone curve and there's parametric and a point curve. Then you have details, sharpening and noise reduction. Then you have split toning, the highlights and shadows. Then you have lens correction, any effects, and then calibration. So depending on the version that you're using, again going back and forth in time. Then you have presets. Now the presets are the same as appeared in Lightroom in the left column. So here you have the presets, okay, so you have color created, black and white curve, grain sharpening and vignetting. In Adobe Camera Raw, they're all the same, okay. So once again, you can open them up and as you scroll through, you will notice the changes impact the image immediately. So it's not applied, but it gives you a kind of a preview to the whole thing. And then at the end, you have a snapshot.
tool. So once again, snapshots the same way that you have in Lightroom. Snapshot allows you to create a moment in history through the process of the image. Hopefully this kind of explains the similarities of the interface with the basic processing. Then when we come to the top tools that are available in the top bar, obviously the magnify tool, the zoom tool, the scroll tool which is the hand tool, the white balance tool, then the color sampler tool. This is different to what is available in Lightroom. What this tool does is actually if you select the tool it allows you to leave color markers. So if I wish to see what the value of this white is somewhere. So I click and notice now there's a marker in here and it says number one and it gives me a readout of the number one value at whatever red, green and blue values may be. Similarly if I can place multiple markers I believe the total would be nine or something like that. I'm not too sure on that. So here number two tells me exactly what my RGB values are. Lightroom on the other hand doesn't really allow you this privilege I call it because this does give me a huge amount of advantage over uh, how my image behaves and I can actually do certain adjustments by numbers if I need to do so. So going beyond this then we have the targeted adjustment tool and if you click on it <coughs> so here we have the targeted adjustment tool and notice there's a tiny arrow underneath it which means that there is additional stuff underneath so if you come here and click it click so you see by default it's set to parametric curve then you have hue saturation and luminance okay similarly in the crop tool you will have presets to crop and you can create your own custom presets straighten tool then perspective adjustment or transform tool healing or cloning tool the red eye removal tool so all of these tools are the same as available in Lightroom now the difference being here let's say if I were to take the uh, adjustment brush. So notice as soon as I select the adjustment brush a set of adjustments become available to me which is no different than in Lightroom. So if I go to Lightroom and I take an adjustment brush the same adjustment so I've selected the adjustment brush so there's the brush size and then the same adjustments become available to us. In recent history, both Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw have introduced a wonderful tool called the Range Mask, which we will discuss in a separate video in itself. Short one, but I think that deserves a video in itself. Similarly, with Adobe Camera Raw, we have the same things and the Range Mask is available. Hopefully, this kind of explains the similarities between the two applications other than the user interface and at the end of the day both are primarily raw processors the advantage with Lightroom is asset management in addition and a whole lot of other things and Photoshop can be a little intimidating and complex for people to work on so whatever works for you works for you there is no comparison between this being better than the other they both perform the same function and developed and designed by the same people at Adobe so the behavior will also be very very similar in terms of what you get at the end of the image thank you very much